1978, a French electroacoustic musician named Michael Moulini emerged seemingly out of nowhere with an album on the crypto label ran by Ange keyboardist Francis de Camps, who produces the album here, uh, Chrysalid, and from that album, the track Lente Chorus. I'm getting kind of a vibe, uh, like an like an acoustic um, version of Ashra's '77, slightly delayed. I compare the two pieces, oh, because of the key center somewhat, and just that overall kind of echoey, ambient guitar approach. Of course, like on acoustic guitar this time, as opposed to electric. sounding polyphonic synth tone uh, underneath the guitar. Plex is being employed, the sound that John Martin used on his 70s era recordings. I think even Peter Hamill used it on a few of his late 70s releases. That it, it, it just it reminds me, the effect is kind of similar, that like echoey acoustic sound. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. I love the contrasting figures, like 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 a, a figure of eight of like this ding 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 and, and then that ding 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 Stylistically, um, I guess I would. There, there aren't many releases like this that walk this this line between, like symphonic, folk instrumental and electronic. It's it's like the missing link between Gordon Giltrap and Edgar Froese or something.
hear the hear the synth tones. Pay attention to the different synth tones, keyboard tones that are like fading in and out behind the uh, guitar. F the the rather persistent guitar f trade offs that we're hearing. Chorus translates to slow running. Appropriate title. going here we, we his, his guitar work has gotten a lot more intricate here and and um, punctual particularly during this section and then we got those synthesizers underneath it like kind of like swelling up on every other bar A lot of it's been in D minor. It seems like we're we're kind of mostly transitioning between D, D minor, and like D, oh, um, uh, D open seconds or something. Album, uh, he is the credits list him as playing twelve string guitar, um, bass, and violin. Um, I haven't heard violin on this particular track, but um, it sounds like acoustic bass and guitar, or maybe it's just one instrument. Who knows? Um, 
and uh, I those tones that I'm hearing those those polyphonic to maybe it's all just like an echo pedal maybe it's uh, just a producer's thing or perhaps it's being played by Francis de Camps although he's only credited with producing the album he of course being the man behind the crypto label that issued this album as well as a few other uh, notable titles from the period like um, well, uh, his own solo album from 1979, as well as um, oh, titles from Mona Lisa, uh, Wapasau, Carp DM. Actually, those were later. Those were reissues. Um, in the actual time itself, um, they issued the Art Kane, or I think, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, scratch that. No, they didn't issue Art Kane. They issued, uh, huh, oh, they had Little Bob's Story. That's quite a, quite a, yeah. So they, they covered uh, quite a diverse range of, of music on the French scene. Oh, they had that Atlantide record from 1970, or no, they had the reissue of it. I, mean, I guess um, they, they issued a handful of albums during the 1970s and then were, Kickstart, the label was uh, brought back to life during the 90s as a reissue. And a lot of other albums from the original, from the same era that the label originally existed, were reissued on the, on the label. So um, it, it kind of has a hand in more titles from the late 70s than it initially could have uh, taken credit for. Because even though it's not being stressed, you can still hear the um, the F sharp. Uh, 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 yeah, it's really stressing the tonic right now. Just a D D D. Oh, I'm hearing some other notes kind of thrown in randomly. Seven, actually, because I think I'm hearing kind of like a C throughout this too, like a fourth note. C, C. I, I, it doesn't feel forced when I do that when I put a C over over this. Yeah, D seven actually. It, it 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 because there's something kind of there's something slightly depressed in the tonality. It's not a minor though, because I'm still hearing the fifth, I'm still hearing an F sharp in there rather than an F for the fifth, but there's something kind of like depressed in the tonality. It must be a seven because seven kind of, um, yeah, has that kind of, kind of, kind of, I don't know, kind of dull tonality to it in a way. Not that's, that 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 that's suitable for certain moods and, and such, yeah. When you take the, um, the you take the octave of the of the tonic and you bring it down a full step. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, Michael Moulin with a lente course from the nineteen seventy eight album Crystal Lead, clocking in at nine minutes. I would say that uh, this is one of those few missing link albums between 
the electronic music that was going on on the continent, in particularly in France and Germany, um, with like you know French artists like Jean Michael Jarre, Zanov, and um, Richard Pinoz, and then um, in Germany with like the Berlin School, um, particularly like Tangerine Dream, Edgar Froese, Ashra, um, and. Uh, also, uh, that on one end, and then on the other end, the kind of acoustic, uh, classical, uh, folk, or like chamber folk, um, of like, oh, bands like, uh, the, uh, Dutch band, um, Flerk, or, um, perhaps, uh, like, guitarists like, uh, Gordon Giltrap. Ricardo Zappa, or even um, Sky, uh, John Williams Sky, or um, and then and then to a lesser extent um, the sounds, if not the actual type of songwriting of of of, of John Martin, but that that only being because of the uh, the, the the effects employed remind me of of. Uh, that echoplex that he uses on a lot of his recordings, even though um, he's much more of a singer-songwriter and, and much more with an emphasis on lyrics, which, of course, we didn't have any on this piece at all, or on this album, for that matter. Um, yeah. So, um, and and uh, he was one of the only artists to really use, or he he took that, he... he he used that that effect to the hilt on his 70s era recordings much more than anyone else that comes to mind. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, a uh, pretty original instrumental album for 1978 or for any year for that matter, before or since. Um, yeah, uh, Michael Mullini, the album Chrysalid, um, the track Lente Course, meaning slow running, uh, produced by uh, Ange keyboardist. Francis de Camps and released on his initially short-lived label Crypto. And uh, yeah, for more rubies and sapphires from this album and from many other French albums of the period, see the directory of albums by French artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and leave a comment if there are any um, observations you have about this track, the layers, the instrumentation. Well, pretty minimal, but what you could decipher from it all in the effects employed. Maybe you can pinpoint which exact pedals and and were used to create the sounds that we heard. Um, a pretty simple piece overall. There, there wasn't a whole lot to really take apart about this all. Um, I kind of just had to let it play the whole time. But uh, it, it's something to really just kind of go into a trance over. Um, in fact, perhaps I, I should have spent less time talking about it and, and more time just zoning out. But um, how entertaining would that have been to watch? Anyway, until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air travel trimaximalist, signing off.